Alrighty, everyone. Good morning. We are here to talk about cell transport. So how uh, different materials can get across a cell membrane in either direction. Okay, so there's a few different types that we're going to focus on for purposes of our class. And what you need to know, a few things. If it's in blue, um, font, please be sure to write it down. Um, also, there will be some pictures. You might want to go, I would ask that you go and find something that looks similar um, or something that is dealing with that particular concept so that you can add that to your notes. You're going to want that, okay, um, to give you an idea when you're studying for your exam. So again, we're going to be talking about cell transport, types of transport across the cell membrane. And our essential question for this is, what are the ways cells transport molecules in and out of the cell? Um, because your cell is uh, just like you. It needs certain things in order to maintain homeostasis. It needs certain things in order to keep balance, right? Um, so it has to have ways to get things in and to get things out. So nutrients in and waste out, all right? So that's your essential question. You should write that down. Um, first of all, we're going to start with simple diffusion. So this is one of the modes um, that gets things, molecules, into and out of the cell. So simple diffusion, you'd want to write this as like a title. Okay, simple diffusion, and this is all in blue, so you need to write all of this, requires no energy. Okay, um, there is a type of transport that requires some energy from somewhere in the cell, and we'll get to that later. Um, but this particular type of transport, simple diffusion, requires no energy, all right? So that's very important. Simple diffusion, no energy at all required, and molecules move from an area of high concentration to low concentration. I'm gonna show you a picture of what that looks like right now, okay? Um, let me go back. All right, area of high concentration to low concentration. And I'm not sure why that is not working for me right now. Ah, see, there we go. Okay, so an area of high concentration to low concentration. If you take a look at the figure right now that was moving, right, um, the little purple dots start in the bottom left corner. Let's see if we can get it to go again. Right, they start in the bottom left corner and they diffuse outwards. So high concentration here in the corner, high concentration means that you have more in a smaller area. Okay, so when these purple dots were all in this left corner right here, all densely packed together, that's an area of high concentration. A lot of purple dots in a small amount of space. So that's high concentration. They start at that little lower corner and then they move to an area of lower concentration, right? They're gonna go from that densely packed area in the corner and once they're able to move, then they're going to move outwards to an area of low concentration, which basically means they're gonna go where there isn't any purple dots. Okay, so if we watch it one more time, right, we can see lots of purple dots and they move to where there are no purple dots into that white space. Okay, so simple diffusion requires no energy and molecules move from an area of low concentration like where they are, or sorry, where they're an area of high concentration when they're all smushed together in that left corner of the box, right? Lots of dots in a small amount of space and then they move to an area of low concentration. They wanted to move outwards to where there weren't any purple dots. The idea of diffusion is sort of like if you got into a crowded elevator, which right now actually would probably not be a thing, okay, due to the circumstances that we're in. But prior to, if you were in a crowded elevator and you get to the bottom. Let's say you had a crowded elevator from the third floor and you're going down to the lobby of a hotel. You're in a crowded elevator. Think about that for a minute. You are all densely packed. You're in an area of high concentration inside that elevator. Lots of people in the elevator. Once the elevator doors open, what happens? Everybody moves out and away from each other to areas of low concentration. That's like diffusion, standing packed inside of a crowded elevator. And then once the doors open, you start to move and you all those people start to move away from each other. So high concentration to low concentration. That is what, what we call passive transport. So simple diffusion is an example of passive transport. It doesn't require any energy. Okay, you want to know that too. If it requires no energy, it's passive transport. Passive transport always moves from that area of 
high concentration, densely packed together in that left corner and moving out in the box, or densely packed people in the elevator and when the door is open, they move out to open space. Okay, passive transport always moves from an area of high to low concentration. And for purposes of your tests and assessments, you need to know that in diffusion, okay, molecules move from an area of high concentration where they're packed together to an area of low concentration where there aren't any, or there aren't less, okay? So diffusion, I just said, it's a passive process. No energy is used to make the molecules move. They have natural kinetic energy, and that might be a term or a phrase that you remember from junior high science. Kinetic energy is that movement energy, okay? Um, molecules naturally are going to move and bounce against each other. Okay, so the reason that they're diffusing is that they're so close together, they have that natural kinetic energy and they're going to be vibrating and moving. And once they do that and they start knocking together, the energy that causes them to do that causes them to move further and further apart. Okay, like in this particular um, example. Okay, so again, passive. Let's see if we can get this to go. Oop. All right, so if this is a membrane, and this is an oxygen molecule, right, the, they're going from an area of high concentration outside the cell to an area of lower concentration inside the cell, right? So when this particular animation starts, there's an area of low concentration inside the cell. There are less molecules, more on the outside. So what happens is, is that those oxygen molecules are going to want to move into the cell because they are going from an area of high concentration outside. So look, there's one, two, three three and four inside, not many, many oxygen outside. So again, they go from high concentration outside and they diffuse into the cell because it's an area of low concentration. Now this is a process that continues all the time, right? Because once this whole thing happens where these molecules move into the cell, well now we've got a high concentration inside and a lower concentration outside. So what do you think is gonna happen eventually? The process will reverse, right? And then those molecules will move out and in and out and in, all right? So membrane through diffusion through a membrane is more specific to what we talk about in biology, right? And the membrane being the cell membrane specifically, okay? Um, so if we're talking about um, diffusion through a membrane, we're talking about an area, again, of high concentration, lots of green dots in one space to an area of low concentration, right? There's no green dots here. So they want to go from where they're densely packed together and they want to go somewhere where there is lots of space. So area of high concentration to low concentration. A solute, right, is something that looks sort of, if we're talking 2D, like this. Solute is a substance, okay, that we have in a solution, right? It's, um, you could think about it like if you were to put salt in water, okay? The salt would be the solute and the water would be the solution, okay? That you, when you mix together, you get the salt water. So in that case, the solute would be the salt in the salt water example, right? That's the salt, okay? Um, and solutes, so stuff, okay? Stuff that's inside of a liquid or inside of a solution, those particles are going to want to move from this area of high concentration to low concentration, okay? And solutes move down the concentration gradient, okay? Moving down the gradient means that you're going from high and you're moving down to low. So when you hear the phrase down a concentration gradient or up a concentration gradient, you want to think about going from, if it's going down a concentration gradient for diffusion, you're going from an area of high concentration to low concentration. That's why it says that you go down because you're going from high right here, high concentration to low concentration. You're like, Miss Munster, that doesn't show it moving down. No, it doesn't. It shows it moving horizontally, but the idea is in your brain that you need to say, okay, if it's high concentration to low concentration, that's going from high to low, so you're going down. All right, next type of um, passive transport, okay, is something called osmosis, and osmosis is basically what we just talked about, 
okay, with diffusion, it's the same thing, it's just only with water. So it has a special name. So the diffusion of water is called osmosis. That's a direct vocabulary word um, and a direct vocab that you would need to know for your exam. Okay, so osmosis is the diffusion of water across a membrane. So we've got a picture here, right, of um, kind of like a cell-ish representation. So this is what would be just the environments and um, inside and outside of the cell. And this is this dashed line here is supposed to um, represent the cell membrane, right? So what we're looking at is you get the green circles are the solute and the blue circles are the water, okay, molecules. So solute molecules, water molecules. And the diffusion of water across the membrane, again, is called osmosis. You really need to make sure you know that. And water does the same thing as solutes do. It moves from an area of high concentration of water to an area of low concentration of water, okay? So if you're taking a look at this, all right, on this side, you have many, 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 many blue dots, right? And only four green solute dots, so lots of water on the left, few solute dots on the right. And then you have many more solute dots here on the right and quite a few less water molecules. And what it tells you here at the bottom is that water is attracted to solutes like salt, so from my previous example, so it will also travel to areas of low solute concentration to high solute concentration. So water is going to move from an area of high concentration of water to an area of low concentration of water, okay? So it does the same thing as diffusion because it is diffusion of water. So you're gonna go from an area of high concentration here of lots of water molecules, and those water molecules are going to move across the cell membrane so that they can go to an area of lower concentration of water. So if you were to watch that, you would see that. And you could see that here in this animation, right? So again, our green dots are the solutes Okay, so lots more waters than solutes here, and you got a lot of solutes over here. So if you have a high water concentration, then it's going to move to an area of low water concentration. And if your solutes are low, then these greens are going to move over. Okay, so they're both going to move depending on where the concentration is. Okay, so on the left side right now, we have lots of water, not a lot of water here. And over here, we have... Um, over here, we have lots of solute, green dots, and over here, not a lot of solute, because remember, green dots are solute, like salt, blue dots are water. So when you're looking at that, you can see them trying to move through, right? Okay, um, and things are moving this way. Water is moving this way, okay? So here, you've got water, again, this diffusion of water. The water is moving from an area of high concentration of water to an area of low concentration of water. So we'll go back and watch it one more time. So if we wanna look at, again, the diffusion of water, which is called osmosis, it's going to move from an area of lots of water, and you can see those waters then moving and moving back and forth, okay? So again, lots of water on this side, it's gonna to move to the other side where there's more solute and less water. All right, so we've got cells and solutions. So this is something that's really important and you really need to know the difference between all three. So if we put a cell into a solution, okay, into a, um, typically into a mixture of, let's say salt and water or sugar and water or whatever, that okay, we're gonna make a solution with water and a solute, water and an additive, okay? There are three possible options that that solution looks like. Okay, the first one is an isotonic solution. Isotonic means that the solution has a solute concentration that is the same, okay, as the solute concentration inside. Okay, so a solution whose concentration, so the concentration of the solution, so outside of the cell, concentration, the number of solutes outside of the cell, is the same as the solute concentration or the number of solutes on the inside of the cell. So isotonic means it is the same. I'm going to take a beaker, or I guess we could just say my water bottle. I'm going to put some solutes in here. Let's say I add salt to it. I put some salt in my water, and I put a cell inside of there, okay? If the solution is isotonic, it means that there will be the same number of salt, okay, or solutes or salt molecules, okay, in the water, itself as there are inside the cell. So the concentrations are equal. And it gives you a picture right here, okay? Um, there are five 
solutes outside the cell and five solutes inside the cell, okay? So isotonic means the numbers match. Five outside, five inside. And that cell will stay as it is. No movement's gonna happen or it will be equal movement in and out, okay? Um, and it's going to stay that way. A hypotonic, okay, hypotonic solution is a solution that solute concentration is lower than the concentration uh, inside the cell, okay? So hypo means less, okay? Hypo, you're meaning less. So you're calling it a hypotonic solution, meaning the solution has less solutes, okay? So if you look at your picture here, you could take a look at it. The solution on the outside only has three solutes, okay? And inside the cell has five solutes, just like before, right? So in this case, the solution is hypotonic, less. There are less solutes outside than there are inside the cell, all right? And then you have hypertonic, okay, which means more. So if you think about hyper, you think about, you know, like my son when he was little, like a hyper little boy, okay, more, Okay, hyper little boy, more energy. So hypertonic solution is a solution whose solute concentration is higher. So the solution in, or sorry, the concentration in the solution, right, is higher than the concentration inside the cell. So in this example, you've got the solution has eight, okay, solutes on the outside, and then the cell has five solutes on the inside still. So a hypertonic solution is this example, more solutes outside. All right, so when you've got a cell in an isotonic solution, it says, um, so you've got your solution, your solute like salt and water, okay? What is the direction of the water movement? The cell is at equilibrium. So when you've got the same thing on the inside and the outside, that's like homeostasis. That's another term that we want to know called equilibrium. You must write that down. Equilibrium means that it is in balance. It's in homeostasis, basically. Water is going to flow in and out of the cell in both directions, and it's just going to flow, and it's going to stay nice and happy, okay? So again, you see this arrow with the two um, arrowheads on it? Okay, that means that water is moving in and out very easily the same, the cell is not, and nothing's happening to it. It's in equilibrium, it's in balance. Same concentration inside and same concentration outside. You could count, you've got um, five water molecules, five solute molecules on the outside, and then on the inside you have five and five as well. The solute and water uh, concentrations are the same. So that's an isotonic solution. This is what the cell does, you need to know that. So what does a cell do in isotonic solution? It's in equilibrium, water flows both ways, both in and out. When you have a cell in hypotonic solution, remember that's less solute outside the cell, so more water outside the cell, what is the direction of water movement? So what's water going to do? Well, outside the cell right now, we have more water and less solute, okay? We have more water. So in this case, the water is going to go into the cell right? Water is attracted to the solute inside the cell. So because it's in hypotonic solution, okay, there is um, more water, okay, respective, more water out here. It's going inside the cell and it will go into the cell. Well, what happens if you get enough water flowing into the cell? What do you think happens? If you get enough water flowing into the cell, it's going to burst, right? So if you have a cell in hypotonic solution, you risk the cell basically bursting because there's too much gonna to be flowing in. And then if you get a cell in a hypertonic solution, okay, it means, meaning that there is less water, okay, um, and that the solute concentration is greater outside the cell, the water is going to flow out. So if you have less water, okay, or more solute, right, outside the cell, then the water is going to go out of the cell. All right, you have three kinds of transport. We did simple diffusion already at the very beginning, and an example of that would be um, dropping ink into a beaker of water. Okay, so if you drop, or food coloring, if you've ever put food coloring in water, um, you can see that happen. So if you drop food coloring into water, it starts out with those, you know, three or four drops, and you could try it at home if you have it. Get a cup of, a clear cup with water in it food coloring, little squeezy bottle, and drop in like four drops of food coloring. And don't agitate it or anything, just let it sit and see what happens. And what you'll find is, is when you first drop those droplets into your 
um, into your cup, they start out very concentrated, right? Super dark, and then they start to diffuse. Okay, that's simple diffusion. Okay, the materials move down their um, concentration gradients. They go from area of high to low concentration. Then you have facilitated diffusion. There's another type, okay? And this requires a passage of materials aided by that high to low concentration, but then you also need a transport or carrier protein, okay? So water and some molecules will just go through the membrane from area of high concentration to low concentration. Something bigger that you really need like glucose, so uh, sugar from carbohydrates that you need as that main source of energy, if they are outside the cell membrane and the cell needs them, they can't just come through the membrane. Look how big these are, right? This is a huge molecule compared to water. So it needs help. So there are these protein channels or um, carrier proteins that the glucose can go through. And so that is another type of passive transport. There's no energy required. When this glucose gets to this carrier protein, the carrier protein recognizes it, and then it changes shape, allows it to go through the channel and then into the cell. And then the last type of transport that you can have is active transport. And in order for this protein to work, okay, it has to have ATP, which is energy. So you're going to have an energy requirement in order for that um, molecule that needs to go through to get there. So the only kind, and you, this is pretty much what you need to know for your test, the only kind of transport that requires energy is active transport. And instead of going down a concentration gradient, instead of going from an area of high to low, okay, it's flipped. So for active transport, it requires energy, number one, and you need to know these for your test. Number one, it requires energy. Number two, the reason you need that energy is because those molecules move from an area of low concentration to high concentration. So the only one that does that is active transport, okay? It needs to move those molecules from an area of low concentration to high concentration, and that's not normal. So the way that you need to do that is you need to put energy into that to drive that reaction, okay? Again, simple diffusion, no energy required, moves from high to low. Examples are oxygen or water diffusing into a cell and carbon dioxide diffusing out. So getting those nutrients in and getting the waste out. Okay, for example, here, moves down. Passive transport, you have facilitated diffusion. Again, does not require any energy, and it uses transport proteins to move from high to low concentration. And again, an example that I told you, glucose, right? Sugar, you need that, but it's too big, so it just can go find a carrier protein or a channel protein, um, transport protein, and it can just go straight through that pore into the cell without needing any energy, okay? So we can get that. We've got different types of transport proteins. You've got channel proteins, which are embedded into the cell, okay, and have a pore. So it's just like, um, if you think about it like um, a tube, okay? So those um, molecules can just travel straight through the tube and then into the cell. Or you have a carrier protein. So they change shape to move materials from one side to the other. So they're one shape, and then when a um, material comes to them, they recognize that material, changes shape, and allows that material through into the cell. All right, last part, active transport. You need energy, or ATP. And remember, again, I told you at the beginning of this slide with the different types of transport, the reason you need the energy is because the materials move from low to high concentration against a concentration gradient. This sentence right here is on your exam. Moves materials from low to high concentration against concentration gradient, meaning normal concentrate, if you're moving down a concentration gradient, okay, you're moving with it, you're going from high to low. Well, in this case, it's flipped. You're going against that gradient from low to high, and you need energy to do that. For example, you can have pumping sodium ions out and potassium ions in, and this is called the sodium potassium pump. So you're getting ions out of the cell and then potassium ions in. And in order to do that, you're going to need that ATP, right, to get this exchange of materials. And it requires this specific protein with these particular um, areas that those um, molecules can fit in and move. Okay, so those are all the types of transport. There's also a really short teacher's pet video that you're going to use to add to your notes if necessary, gives kind of an easy, quick recap. And thanks for listening. See you guys next time.